I think the most important thing to know about the faith, you know, um, is <laughs> is that you can't become orthodox. You can't live orthodoxy in a, um, if you really want to live it, you can't do it just coasting. You can't, you know, you're not just saved and, you know, all is good. There is... A, a process, you know, you you engage, you you go to confession, you 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 have to to take on certain disciplines and slowly try to 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 move forward, you know. And so, I think it's important for people to understand that as they enter in, as they approach orthodoxy, is that it's not going to be on your own terms. You know, you have to you have to enter into a life, and you have to enter into relationships of submission to to uh, to other to to principles, to traditions, to uh, and to people. You have to to submit to your confessor, submit to your spiritual father, and so all of those things are so countercultural to the modern world that it's important to uh, to understand to understand that as you approach as you approach orthodoxy i think i think the heart of orthodoxy is is christ i think that that's obvious and i think that what's amazing about orthodoxy which i've found so profound is that orthodoxy seems to have preserved or kept the multi the multiple aspects of christ and and I think that that is so important and so profound. And so we we have this notion of Christ as the uh, implicit principle of the world. And so we have this image of Christ as a child who is hidden in a cave. And this notion of of Christ as the hidden spark, which is hiding in the people that you meet. You know that Christ is hidden in the world, hidden in those in 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 in, in the cosmos. And then we also have the image of Christ as you know entering into death as taking on all of death onto himself have we have this image of christ on the cross we have this image of christ in the dome of the church as the sovereign as the emperor as the as the the magnificent one who is above everything and so i think that that once we once we see christ as filling up you know, filling up everything from the highest to the lowest. I think that that is really the heart of orthodoxy, and that is the most precious thing that it has to offer. And then it, then we see that this filling up of Christ from the highest to the lowest, then also appears in the life of the saints and in and and fills up the world in in all other types of ways. And I think that really is the the way the the, the greatest thing that orthodoxy has to offer is this 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 filling up of the world with with Christ and with the 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 light of God the we talk about the divine energies of God which fill up the all of creation and that we can that that we can perceive as we approach as we commune as we come together you know as we learn to love our neighbor as we learn we can we can approach God and participate in the life of God participate in 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 those those uh become you know, God to the to the capacity that we can become God, you know, by participating in his life. And and that is I mean, that's mind blowing for most Western Christians to even hear. But uh, but that all those things are the heart of orthodoxy. And and uh, and I mean, those are the things that get me excited when I when I think about about the Orthodox tradition. Uh, yeah, it is out of step with the world. Orthodoxy is definitely out of step with the world. But then, you know. I don't I don't want to live in a world of zombies, you know, I you know I don't I don't uh I also don't like certain aspects of where the world is going and I think that that traditional Christianity that orthodoxy has an answer to the nihilism to the desperation that and to the fragmentation that we're seeing in the world. So it is precisely because in a way orthodoxy is out of step with the world that it can provide a path 
towards somewhere else, towards something central, so, you know, something that is solid that can hold the world together and prevent it from falling into the abyss that it, it seems to be to be headed into now in terms of our our lo loss of meaning, loss of cohesion. You know, you know the fact that in, what is it like? Almost half of the people are on antidepressants. Half of the children are on some kind of drug. You know, it's you know everybody is addicted to to, to porn. Everybody is addicted to 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 all kinds of things. You know, that's the image of 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 our world. Uh, and so orthodoxy is <laughs> out of step with that, and it can give you another path. So yeah, the, well, I, I I can speak for my own for myself. I think that a lot of converts, not all converts, but many converts that I've met, and even myself, we come at orthodoxy at first intellectually in a way because we read books and we read theologians and we're we're amazed reading the church fathers we get this this amazing vision you know you read the philokalia and you get the sense of a, of these spiritual fathers amazing spiritual fathers that that teach you the jesus prayer and and so we have this vision you know of uh of of orthodoxy it's almost a theoretical vision of orthodoxy and so sometimes you enter into the church and you realize that you know this is still a human community with all the foibles and all the the the, the difficulties that that come in with human institutions and so you know sometimes you 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 get this disillusion you know and i certainly felt it a, a disillusion to feel like no i'm not encountering you know what i read in the lives of the saints i'm not encountering this amazing you know uh uh, starets who will who will take me you know like in the the Russian pilgrim let's say which will take me to towards uh, towards uh, a mystical experience you know um, uh, and so you have to kind of get through that first wave of maybe uh, intellectual disappointment to then realize you know that it's a that it's a path and that you're actually not very far on that path when you when you convert and you have to take the breadcrumbs that you can get and and just slowly move move forward w despite all the 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 difficulties despite all the fact you know all of people's faults and all of people's weaknesses and just kind of slowly move and as you slowly move then you feel you encounter this slow theophany that I that I that I discuss and I think that a lot of it will then depend on your own capacity to uh to let you know the light of of Christ, to let the light of God transform you, and to 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 uh, to open yourself up to that to that light. So, I think some of the the most the most important thing that Orthodoxy has to offer the West is obviously the 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 life in Christ and the life of the Church, the communion of the saints, uh, is the most important thing that it has to offer the world. But since we're talking about culture and we're talking about cultural manifestations, there is something very important that Orthodoxy can offer to the West and to the modern world, and that is this amazing preservation of the totality of this pattern that I talk that I was talking about. The the connection between the scripture and then the lives of the saints and the liturgy and the iconography and the architecture, all of these like I said, create this this amazing whole that can act as a as a bastion and that can act as a a frame in which we can live in order to face the the chaos of the modern world. And I think that that's something that used to be there in the West, was there at some point in the West, but has been slowly degraded with time. But for some miracle miraculous reason you know it has been preserved in the orthodox tradition and it has been constantly revived and uh and kept and so i think that it can offer a breath of fresh air to the west it can help to reinvigorate our culture and reinvigorate our forms and help people see all those connections in in uh in the stories where we have been taken over by the scholarly approach where we've dissected the Bible, we've dissected the stories in this, in this critical historical way. But orthodoxy brings us back to the poem, brings us back to this beautiful pattern which runs through everything. And so we can enter into that and it, uh, it actually 
is that symbolism. It brings meaning together in our lives and, and it can do that in our society. It's interesting because when you talk to Orthodox people, often, you know, you, you get the feeling that they're still living, you know, in the, in the fourth century or, you know, the seventh century or the eighth century or the, or the 11th century. There is this very, very deep connection to the past and this feeling like those fathers that wrote, you know, the, the ecumenical councils, you know, the, 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 the theologians that, that precede us, that we're still engaging with them, that they're part of our community. And I think that, I think that that is a really, really powerful thing that has been lost quite a bit in the West, you know, you know, Catholicism has a little bit more of it, but it, it's truly astounding to, to, to engage with Orthodox people and really feel like they're talking about St. Basil as if St. Basil had lived, you know, last week, uh, and, uh, and, and, and engaging with, with their thought and, and talking. And so I think that that's really a very powerful thing is to, to really live in this line, to feel like there is this line from Christ up to today. And we inhabit that line. We inhabit that that thread, you know, uh, through the early fathers and then, then through the hesychastic renewal and all these things still exist today and still are part of the whole package, let's say, of orthodoxy. And, uh, and it's difficult to describe, but there really is that, that feeling of being connected, you know, being connected to this whole civilization that has been there for 2000 years. So I think that, um, yeah, I think that, that that is something very profound. And, and you see it not only in the text, let's say, with the fathers, but you see it, like I said, you see it in the art, in the visual, uh, we see it in the architecture, we see it in the hymnology, we see it in the music. Everything has this deep connectedness to, you know, to this line that goes all the way to Christ that uh, it's, it's very beautiful and it, it, it has preserved, uh, let's say, uh, this coherent pattern that I talk about. And it, because of that, it, it, it inhabits that, that grand pattern, that, that, that huge pattern that, that has been, let's say, the Christian civilization.